Hello, folks, and happy Palm Sunday. In Palm Sunday, we remember the first day of the most important week in human history. Palm Sunday is the day when Jesus rode on a donkey down the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem in fulfillment of a 500-year-old prophecy. Palm Sunday is the day when Jesus declared to the world that he is the promised Messiah, and he said something even more dramatic. And we're going to see what Jesus said on Palm Sunday in more detail in just a few moments. But in order to see what Jesus was saying on Palm Sunday, we need to go back to our study in the 23rd Psalm. Uh, as we saw last time, uh, David is bringing his experience as a shepherd into the 23rd Psalm, where shepherding meant taking the flock on a long road trip that would eventually lead back home. And so David says, the Lord is my shepherd who leads me to good places where I flourish and thrive in life. The Lord is my shepherd who leads me through dark valleys by protecting me with his rod and drawing me close with his staff. And the Lord is my shepherd who brings me home. And today we're focusing on this third topic and how the shepherd brings me home. And, uh, this is the very best part. And so listen again to God's word reaching out to you through David's experience in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and your mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are powerful words from God's heart to your heart. But these are also words that raise a few questions. Uh, you're a smart cookie, and so you notice that there's a shift in language from the first half of the psalm to the second half of the psalm that begins, you prepare a table before me, my cup overflows. And you're thinking, I thought this was a psalm about sheep, and sheep don't use tables and cups. And of course, you're right. And that's why there are at least three different opinions about the second half of Psalm 23. There are some Bible scholars who think that in the second uh, half of this psalm, uh, David is no longer comparing himself to a sheep, but now is describing himself as a guest in God's mansion home. Then there are those scholars who say, no, David is completely staying within shepherding imagery in all this uh, language. And then there are those scholars in the middle who say that David is skillfully using words with double meanings that speak both about shepherds and shepherding and about coming home to a banquet at the same time. And this is what I see. I see David weaving together words that have double meanings that apply equally to shepherding and to banqueting. And in the process, David is declaring that the Lord is my shepherd and that he has adopted me as his personal lamb and has brought me into his home forever. So you can see these double meanings in several places here in the second half of the psalm. A perfect example is the word table. Uh, David here uses a word that can mean a table in God's mansion home, but also a word that can refer to a fertile plain, and in fact is used that way uh, another place in the psalms, uh, Psalm 78. 
And then David also uses this image, you anoint my head with oil, which is something, again, has double meanings because it could be something you did for a special guest in your home as a special honor, but it's also something that shepherds would do for sheep. They would anoint the sheep's head, uh, especially if the sheep was just being driven batty by insects. The oil acted as kind of an insect repellent, which would give the lamb peace from pests. So I think in this second half of the psalm, David is still comparing himself to a sheep, and he's saying that the Lord is my shepherd who has adopted me as his uh, loved lamb, and he's brought me into his home forever. Now, if you disagree with me, God and I still love you. You're pushing it, though. But really, the truth is, it's all good because... uh, The message from God is the same. What's God's message? God's message is summarized in those words, surely your goodness and your mercy will follow, follow me all the days of my life. So what is following you? A quick story. Um, I uh, did my PhD in Scotland, even though I uh, got the degree Jen and I did it as a joint project. And when we crossed that finish line, we decided to celebrate by crossing the English Channel uh, for a week-long trip through continental Europe. We started in France. Uh, On our first morning in Paris, we woke up in our hotel with an empty backpack that we had plans to fill. So we went to a bakery and got some fresh bread, put it in the backpack, went to a fromagerie and got a big hunk of cheese and put it in our backpack, bought some jam, all with dreams of uh, having a midday snack uh, in a romantic Parisian park. Well, we went on our way through Paris and uh, it was wonderful except for one thing. Don't get me wrong, Jen and I love France and French people, but it stunk. It just, it smelled terrible everywhere we went. And what I'm gonna say is gonna sound culturally insensitive, but just stay with me for a moment because everywhere we went, there was this horrific body odor. We were on a bus and the body odor just brought tears to our eyes. And, uh, but it wasn't just the bus. It was in the shops. It was everywhere. And the smell just made us so negative toward Paris and toward France and wanted, made us want to keep our distance from uh, French people. And it was all so negative that we decided, forget the park. We're just going to go back to our hotel room and have our bread and cheese. So we got to the hotel room and I opened opened the backpack and <laughs> oh, oh, oh the the smell just like singed my eyebrows it was the cheese our fromage was fromangy it smelled like an old dog wearing old sneakers filled with old smelly cheese and I started reviewing the day and how I had gone all these places with uh, a weapon grade stink bomb uh, on my back Uh, all day long this stinky cheese was following me and coloring everything that I saw I had a negative view of a beautiful city I had a negative view and attitude toward a whole country I was keeping myself from good people and actually blamed the odor on them when I was Pepe Le Pew, not not them, which just goes to show that my attitude in life is shaped by whatever is following me, or here, better yet, uh, my attitude is shaped by whatever is pursuing me, and I say pursuing because that's a better translation of David's Hebrew word in this psalm. David says of his shepherd, your goodness and your mercy will pursue me, pursue me all the days of my life. And guess what? This Hebrew word for pursuing is a shepherding word. It actually refers to what is a shepherd's primary task, which is chasing after the sheep. And why do shepherds have to chase the sheep? It's because 
Sheep are these nervous creatures who express their fear by running everywhere. Sometimes sheep run and they don't even know what they are running from. Uh, True story, Uh, this goes back to uh, June uh, 2005 and uh, a documented report from the nation of Turkey. But apparently uh, there was this flock of sheep and in this flock of sheep, one lamb was startled by something, was, uh, was all of a sudden afraid of something and started to run. And all the other sheep saw, hey, that guy's running. We need to run too. And so they followed this first lamb and ran in the same direction. Unfortunately, they were running and all ran over a cliff. The first went off, went off the cliff, and then they, they were all together running, and they were just running after each other, and then, bah hoo, bah hoo, bah hoo. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an animal lover. If you're an animal lover, just know that there are no animals harmed in this sermon illustration. I'm sure the sheep just all bounced on each other. They all survived. Maybe not the first one. But the point is that sheep, they react to fear by running or uncertainty by running. They even run from good things. Uh, Shepherds will tell you that when a lamb is sick and they come to the lamb with medicine, the lamb's instinct is to run away from the shepherd. Shepherds shepherds will tell you that uh, if you go toward an injured lamb with bandages, uh, the instinct of that lamb is to run. But a good shepherd pursues the lamb with goodness. The good shepherd pursues with goodness. And if the Lord is my shepherd, then God is promising that he's coming after me. He's coming after me with good things, with good plans, and with good blessings. Not just some days, not other days. No, the promise is I come after you with goodness all all the days of your life. And if goodness, the goodness of God is what I see pursuing me, it, it shapes my attitude toward everything in life. I can be going through the darkest days, the darkest valleys, and I can still see good things good things that God has planned, good things that I can trust God in, good things to be grateful for, good people to show love to and see as love receivers instead of disease carriers. If, on the other hand, I believe that I am being pursued by economic disaster and deprivation and scarcity and ruin it also will color everything that I see. It's like carrying that stink bomb uh, in my backpack. It will cast negativity on all the situations and all the relationships of my life. If I'm being pursued by ruin, then a negative attitude will follow me all the days of my life. So what is pursuing you these days? The answer to this question shapes your entire attitude toward life. Um, I know that uh, many of us are facing some serious financial realities, and I'm not minimizing that at all here. In fact, here at BlackRock, we have something we call the Deacons Fund. And it is a fund that has been uh, gifted by generous BlackRock givers like you and is designed to prevent any BlackRock attender from falling through the cracks into harm or ruin. Because at BlackRock, we're a family and we're we're going to help each other through this. We're going to help each other get through this. We're going to share with each other financially, but Also, we're going to uh, just keep reminding ourselves not to just follow uh, the fear talk over the cliff, but we're going to keep reminding ourselves that we're not being pursued by ruin, but we're being pursued by a shepherd and his goodness and his mercy. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's the shepherd's mercy that brings us home as his adopted lambs forever. Jesus is the shepherd 
who pursues us with mercy. In fact, in Jesus, I see the extremity that God will go to in order to pursue me with this mercy that welcomes me home forever. Here's the extreme truth about Jesus. Jesus is the shepherd who became one of the sheep to save us one by one through the sacrifice of his blood, which brings us to the meaning of Palm Sunday that we celebrate today and what Jesus did on the first day of that Passover week long ago. What is Passover week? Well, Passover goes back 1,500 years before Jesus to a time when God's people were held in slavery in Egypt. And Pharaoh would not let God's people go. And so God brought plague after plague upon Egypt, culminating in the final plague, which was the angel of death. And God told his people the exact time when this judgment would come and how to escape it. God said that the judgment would come on the 14th day of the month. And so four days before, on the 10th day of the month, he, God instructed them to take their best lamb from their flock and care for it. Then God said, on the 14th day of the month, sacrifice that lamb and then apply the lamb's blood on the outside of your home, on your front door, on the top and the sides of the door frame of your front door. And sure enough, on the 14th day of the month, death came to every household in Egypt from Pharaoh on down. But wherever the lamb's blood was applied to the front door, the angel of death would pass over, pass over. And everyone in that home was saved under the blood of the lamb and eventually led by God to freedom from slavery. And God commanded his people to remember this Passover every year. And so that's what God's people did. Every year for 1,500 years, they remembered Passover up until the day uh, and time of Jesus uh, when God's people would come to Jerusalem to sacrifice a Passover lamb. But they did not come to Jerusalem uh, with their own lamb. No, uh, instead on the 10th day of the month, they would gather lambs from the hillsides around Jerusalem and they would parade those lambs down the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem on the 10th day of the month. And then these lambs were sacrificed at the altar in, uh, in the temple in Jerusalem on the 14th day of the month. And the last Passover lamb was sacrificed on the dot at 3 p.m. called the ninth hour when the shofar horn was blown from the pinnacle of the temple and all Jerusalem fell silent. And I share all this information with you because it reveals who Jesus is. Jesus is the Lamb of God who gave his blood to set you free and to bring you home forever in his mercy. I just marvel at this uh, amazing plan that uh, we celebrate in Holy Week, starting with Palm Sunday. What was Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday was the 10th day of the month, which means that when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he did so at the same time that all those thousands of Passover lambs were being paraded down the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem. But that's not all. The gospel writers emphasize that Good Friday when Jesus was crucified was the 14th day of the month. Jesus was crucified at the same time that all those Passover lambs were being sacrificed. And Jesus committed his spirit to death exactly at 3 p.m., the gospel writers say, the ninth hour. And the shofar horn was blown, all Jerusalem went silent enough to hear Jesus and his final words before death. He cried out, it is finished, which were words used all the time regarding to bills, which meant paid in full. 
And so if you have applied the blood of the shepherd who became a lamb to the doorframe of your heart, when Jesus said, paid in full, he had you in mind. Jesus is the shepherd who became a lamb and pursues you with the offer of God's mercy, making you an adopted lamb who is welcomed forever into God's house. And in these days of this deadly virus, it is completely natural for people to think about their mortality. Death will come eventually to all of us, which is why Jesus is pursuing you with his mercy right now, today. The shepherd pursues you with his mercy because he knows that you'll never have peace in life unless you know you'll have peace at death. So this 23rd Psalm is is a heartfelt message from the shepherd Jesus to your heart. In this 23rd Psalm, it begins with the shepherd's promise that you can have peace in every step of the road trip that is life's journey. But this 23rd Psalm concludes with the shepherd's promise that you can also have peace when your road trip comes to an end, when the life journey ends. Jesus is the good shepherd who pursues you with goodness and mercy right now. Doesn't matter how dark the valley may seem to you right now that you're walking. It it doesn't matter how much you feel as though maybe your dreams have been dashed. Jesus is pursuing you with his goodness, if you'll trust him. It doesn't matter how far you feel like you've wandered from this shepherd It doesn't matter how much you feel like you have fallen or faltered or failed. This shepherd pursues you with his mercy. Do you believe this? Do you believe that your shepherd is pursuing you with goodness and mercy? If you believe it, slow down. Slow down and let the shepherd catch you. This shepherd is pursuing you with with his goodness and mercy. Just slow down right now and let him catch you. Let the shepherd gather you up in his arms to restore your soul. No matter how much you feel as though you've been depleted at this time, the shepherd comes to restore your soul. And so I'd like to offer you an opportunity to slow down right now just in a few moments of silent prayer. Um, right now, I invite you to close your eyes or do whatever you need to do to just uh, focus on Jesus in a few moments. And uh, this is what I invite you to think about during this silent moment of prayer. If you have not applied the blood of the shepherd to your front door right now, just receive God's forgiveness based on your belief in Jesus and what he did on the cross for you. On the other hand, if you are already a follower of this shepherd in faith, then right now just return to your shepherd's arms and let him restore you. Restore you with his pursuing goodness and mercy. Let him restore your soul. Oh, Jesus, thank you for being our shepherd, the shepherd who gives us peace in every step of this road trip, this journey in life. But we're also thanking you, especially during this Holy Week, for the marvelous plan in which you, our shepherd, became a lamb to set us free and save us through the sacrifice of your blood. Right now, Lord, we just are crying out for your peace to fill us now. Would you give us your peace that not only gives us confidence in life, but also confidence that we will be with you in your house 
as your adopted lambs forever and ever. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us this Palm Sunday. This is Holy Week. This is a powerful week for us as Christians. So make sure you check the website to know all the ways that we're helping ourselves celebrate Holy Week, truly remember what Jesus did for us. And we look forward to celebrating Easter with you next week.